Section 1.4 is talking about scientific notation, which is taking a really big number, for instance, 1 times 10 to the 5th is 1, 3, 4, 5, is 100,000. That's a large number, but we could say it easy, more easily with 1 times 10 to the 5th, or 8 times 10 to the negative 6, looks like this if it was written out. Sometimes you'll put a calculation into your calculator and it comes up as an error because the number is too big to fit into the space in your calculator. That's another really good reason why we have scientific notation. So in scientific notation, there's three parts to it. Coefficient, power of 10, and the unit. Make sure you always write the unit. The coefficient is the number in front. So if we look at 2400, there's an invisible decimal right after that last zero. In order to put in scientific notation, we want to put it right after the first number that's not a zero. So if you read from left to right, the first number that's not a zero is a two. So that becomes 2.4. That's where they got this from. That's the coefficient. That's the number in front. Then it's going to be times 10 because that's how many places you move the decimal. Is it Each place is a ten, place of 10, one tenth. So times 10, and we moved it three places here. And that's where they got this from. And then the unit that it goes with is meters. So number in front is the coefficient. The power of 10 is the decimal places that you've moved it. And then the unit is just merely the unit that's at the end. Now, this actually talks about whether it should be positive at the end or the power of 10 should be negative. Well, how I usually remember this, they talk about if it moves to the left, it's positive. If it moves to the right, it's negative. I, I'm a visual person. So if it's a bigger number, like 2,400, and it's going down to 2.4, it starts as a bigger number going to a smaller number, it's going to be positive because it's a bigger number. If it's a smaller number going to a bigger number, for instance, it goes 0 0.00086 down to 8.6, it goes to a smaller number or it goes from a smaller number to a bigger number, it's negative because it's a smaller number. So that also helps you when you put it back into scientific notation. For instance, if you have 7.9 times 10 to the negative 5. Oops, keep it in grams. All right, that negative tells you that this number is going to be really small. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's where the decimal is going to go, and every loopy gets a 0. So, 0 0.000079 grams. Because it was negative, I knew to make this a small number and move it to reflect that. So, I moved it to the left. A couple of examples of some scientific notation that would relate to nursing specifically. This is a picture of a single chicken pox. And that's actually 0 0.000003 meters big. So rather than saying all those zeros, they're able to just say 3 times 10 to the negative 7. You can get kind of confused with zeros. Plus, if you're putting it in your calculator, you might either miss one or add an extra one because you don't count correctly, because you didn't count it out correctly. Some more examples. Um, let's say the volume of gasoline that the Americans use in a year. Instead of saying 550 trillion liters, we can say 5.5 times 10 to the 11th. 
instead of saying for bacteria being point zero 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 so on and so forth to one kilogram, we can just say one times ten to the negative nineteen. The zeros get cumbersome. That's why we use scientific notation. To put scientific notation into your calculator, that's actually a really important thing to know. We put you want to look at your calculator, you want to have a scientific calculator and look for e, either EXP or EE. It could be a second function. So if you cannot find this, this key on your calculator, you need to either look at the manual or come in for extra help to find it. Because you will be using this, this key for the next couple months. So for 4 times 10 to the 6, you put 4 EE or EXP, one or the other. It could be a second function, so make sure you realize that too. 4 EE 6. That EE takes the place of times 10. You do not put times 10 into the calculator. If it was a negative one, you would want to do that same thing. That negative button comes in right before you put the power of 10 in. Alright, so I'll give you a chance to do this on your own real quickly. Alright, so we have an invisible decimal here. We remove it three, four times to get it after the six because you need to be after the first number from left to right. 6.4 times 10 to the fourth because we moved it four times. Grams. Part B. This is the first non-zero number. So 2.1. Move it one, two times times 10 to the to the second meters, but we it was a small number that we're making bigger, 0 0.021 to 2.1, so it should be to the negative 2. And then finally, move it past the first, right behind the first non-zero number, so 1.38 times 10. In order to do that, we moved it twice. And it was a big number, 138 to 1.38, big number that we made smaller, so we're going to keep this positive and milliliters. There's your answers once again. That is all we're going to discuss for this particular video. The next video will be about significant figures.